Evo's here. Now we got some content. Power for Exile is a mere week away. December 6th. It is coming really quickly. I am stoked at it. Now, what I'm going to do here is I want to take a look um, at Darth Micro DM or Darth Microtransactions gameplay. Um, I didn't know he was one of the people that actually flew out and was able to test it, which is pretty cool. Um, but he's, he's, I know he's like, uh, I started, I came across his videos around Diablo 4-ish. Yeah, Diablo 4. That's what I, that's what, that's what I came across him on. And so I do watch his videos and he, after Diablo 4 and his fans were like, kind of like really telling him to try Path of Exile. He went and tried Path of Exile, liked it, and now, so he's now really, like, hyped for Path of Exile 2. Um, and at the time he tried it, Path of Exile had a high, I won't say a high ceiling for entry, but there are a lot of things, like, if you died, you would lose experience almost on, it was kind of Souls-like, except for you had no way of getting that back. So there were several things that would, that there, they removed a lot of that from path of exile 2 by the way which we'll cover in another video but yeah they've made a lot of change to make it more easier for the regular person to you won't have that fear of um just trying out a build because if you die too much you start losing levels that was a thing when i played i think they got rid of that a year ago but i haven't played path of exile in some time but when i played it you could lose levels you could lose experience. There's a the death penalty. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. But I do know he's a big warrior sort person. So he's gonna actually show he showcase some of his warrior gameplay. Anybody out there thinking about playing a warrior? Uh. So and I'm looking at it. I'm thinking about personally like a mercenary for me. And I'll also look at somebody who who uh played uh, a mercenary as well let's let's get let's let's get the party going it's the time how recent is this gameplay the most recent so this would have been the most recent test of gameplay there is right now this would have been as of november very first boss this is essentially hell lock here space bar to avoid attack so kind of has like an actual tutorial in the beginning so this is the witch's house so there are, I'm gonna pause this just real fast here. So you're gonna notice there's like a witch here that isn't aggro until you click the cauldron and then disappears. So this is like the witch's house. This is one of those bosses that's like a sub, like you don't have to fight this boss. They were mentioning that when you see a checkpoint in the game, then there might be something around it. And this is one of those scenarios in which it's summoned an elite and it caught me off guard. I didn't expect this. I'm pretty sure I get dumpstered here, like immediately. So you can see it's- That is crazy. So you kind of like, I guess this is the checkpoint. I guess this is a good way to to know if you about to run up to something you might be not you might not be able to deal with. Like a yellow elite, actually kind of scary, and I'm pretty sure I just straight up die here on my first on my first attempt on this guy. I was like kind of caught just... up guard here, ran out of potions, and then I'm pretty sure I just die and go back. Why don't you go kill those things over there and get right some here. potions so, back? Like, holy moly! So I think oh my I think God. I tried killing this guy a couple times actually. You're standing in coats. I'm unable to kill it. Yeah, I tried to go back town. I realized I can't go back town because it's ran. I suppose I said just die here. I think I tried to kill it like two or three times. Realized like it's kind of brutal, and then I go. That is the one thing about Path of Exile. Unlike um some other RPGs, Diablo. Um. And this is not even really the crap on the D4, seriously. It's just that there are few and far between memorable bosses uh, to D4 story. Uh, I stream D4. If you saw my stream, I did struggle with, um, what was that boss that they said was from D2 near the end? But other than him... And the boss you fight in the in the in the eye of the sandstorm and Lilith, there were like the story was good cinematically, but gameplay wise, there wasn't too many things where you could just turn your brain off and level and like struggle. You're not paying attention 
regular mobs or or elites can take you out in this game. Go kill the other shit and come back to it, I think, which is sort of what they were talking about in the interview, where it's like they want people to go around. If you can't beat something, kind of come back. Look at the dots is to do draining your health. It's like it's the damage that's spread out over time. I'm sure they're gonna cover it. I I need I want to know what the, the well the elemental resistance or so she's gonna be she's gonna have a buff against uh she's gonna have a buff against uh elemental damage extra lightning damage she does extra lightning damage now that fix really isn't her favorite since she's a frost witch but and my potion like i'm literally right in the beginning of this oh game my here. god and oh it's hell i'm getting shit on here at this point i'm like okay well i'm going to i think with him being a warrior he might have needed a crossbow or something because that that space makes it to basically where you're gonna have to build like some kind of mad some kind of frost resistance or because his health is just it's just this butter to a flame to go farm some more get some levels and come back which is basically what i did at this point but i think i think people are going to run into those types of situations and wonder like do i need to you know what am i doing wrong or get frustrated and then they just got to kind of do what jonathan was talking about in the interview which is like continue to go get gear farm etc i i will leave all of the me suffering footage in here so you can at least watch it the run <laughs> slam is like the majority of my damage throughout the entirety of this run but is like slightly disappointing with how slow there is a so part of me like that want to do like the spartan bit build tower shield type build but i don't know speed isn't me trying to figure out like where i want to go my plan was from the beginning i have zdps through almost this entire run because my plan from the beginning is find where stun build up is and then i want to do stun build up so i want to see how fast i can proc the stun because in my very first test when i was doing this was I also something i recommend before you start building get a glimpse Take an overview of the tree and try to see if you see anything that you like. So that way you have an idea of where you want to go before you just start randomly putting points. Have you seen, um, I did this in my playthrough. One of my, it should be like my first playthrough of, um, my only playthrough of Dragon Age. You will see what I started leveling up because the, the, the trees are just the same pretty much and not it's not as big but yeah get an idea of what's around the tree and what interests you so you could know what path you want to build and you don't want to randomly put points in as as you get to something because then and, and, and when you with such a focus with such a minimalist small view doing that over time it may not make sense as to what the hell you built which we go over that another time as well i consistently spam mace and it made it where the bosses actually got locked out i would immediately i would immediately get it where they can't like the bosses couldn't attack at all and since that gameplay i noticed they kind of changed that because my very first footage is me like cheesing bosses like the bosses can't even move they're just getting stunned over and over and over and over and over again i, so I kind of want to try that i would have thought they would have some the kind of reduction so threshold is going to come in nicely yeah so you're going to watch zdps for a while before i get my head out of my ass here in that one by the way have portal scrolls been removed yet Portal scrolls were removed. It is free to portal back. No portal scrolls. Oh my god. Oh my god. Thank god. Oh, portal scrolls were so annoying. In order for you to back to town, you had to have a scroll. And if you were out of a scroll, you actually had to walk all the way back to the nearest. Um, there used to be a stone in the ground. I'm not sure if it was a heart stone, but you had to actually walk all the way back there and then use it now um early game that could be a problem but if you get to second third fourth fact you tend to build up portal scrolls because you're just going to end up saving it to walk to town and it may not be as much of a problem but that was a nuisance that was that was i'm i'm gonna I'm a stop freezing so much we only three minutes back you can just hit the button to go straight back they do not need portal scrolls anymore id scrolls are still in the game cast timer instant the portal has a cast time and can be interrupted okay so i'm pretty sure i die a
explode here. This is a warning for people with ZDPS. This is a pretty brutal portion. I'm pretty sure I died the Rust King about 15 times. ZHP greater than ZDPS? It's both. It's both ZHP and ZDPS. From what I've seen, what do you think is a realistic playtime of the first act? I assume Jonathan, 25 hours for X 13 is for non PoE players. So, a good question. I got to the end of Act 2 in about 7 hours. And Sorry. Uh. So, those who don't know, Z, uh, sorry, ZDPS basically means you're playing more of a support character. So, um, zero, it's most, it actually stands for zero, uh, deep, zero damage per second. That's, that's a whole other, um, thing that we'll go into, but just, just so if you, do, if you hear that term, you're like, what the hell is ZDPS? And then I struggled to kill the final Act 2 boss for like two hours and straight up couldn't kill him. And that's because I, I definitely needed to like get stronger. But I knew the servers were about to turn off because they turned off after eight hours. And I, I was like, I'm going to just sit here and smash my head into this boss and try to beat him. So it took me about seven hours effectively to get to the end of Act 2. You were underleveled in bad gear. I was three levels down on the zone when I started. And then I ended up being even level by the end of it because of how many times I had to run through the zone. Regular monsters are hitting him like crazy. Is the story good? I wouldn't know. I skipped the story because I didn't fly there for voice acting. I wanted to play the game, so I was actively trying to play the game. Poison looks cooked. Yeah, it's a pretty brutal start, dude. They give you a lot of mobs. Like, people worry about the density and stuff, but it's actually, like, kind of hard. Seems like survivability stats are a must-have. Yeah, you really do. I was trying Ooh. to find a way to survive here in the beginning. Once I get out of, like, the first two zones, it started being a lot smoother. The first bit was actually pretty brutal, brutal for me. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, for new players, dying a bunch of something I'm expecting to do. How much will this impact my early game or is it only late game I have to worry about? Okay, so I can only speak to my class. I know there's some other classes that were, had smoother starts. I I died a whole bunch the first, like, hour, hour and a half. He died a lot in the first hour of playing this game. Do not be afraid of death in this game. You are, this is, this game is more so about setups rather and knowing what you're fighting and getting used to it rather than um you are like some you actually have to walk the path and build up to where you're like a god rather than you know other ones most other ones you kind of the, the enemies build up the enemies will build up with you too here but there's no doubt about it and then you definitely, like you, you definitely are not, you can't just turn to. your brain, your brain in off. In terms of like, how does this impact your experience? I think you'll probably have to learn to go back to town. I really like, for some reason, I just didn't want to go back to town. Like right here, I could run behind the tree and go back to town. But like, I just, I figured it was faster just to die and resurrect since there's no pendulum. I also like, think he's dying a lot since so that's like, well, the thing. If you're melee and, and, and everybody is doing range town. attacks, I'm trying to like, like look how many, how much range he has at him. Ranger, mercenary, or a, um, I don't think it's going to like impact your experience. I think the point is it's Ranger kind of difficult. Would and then probably wouldn't have this like issue. Doing your build correctly, you'll get stronger and like. For, let me give you an example. So right now, like look at look at the or even a monk, off, right? Like absolutely brutal. It feels way better once you're strong enough to like destroy through these mobs. So the kind of the the low weak start makes you feel better as you go through. Like does that make sense? Why are you not blocking? Because uh, I was elected to lead, not to read. I'm not necessarily a fan of blocking. I'm trying to do damage. I just want to hit them. So as soon as I drop the, the as soon as I can drop the shield, I do, and I go two-handed like immediately. It's a mentality thing. I'm I'm role playing. I'm basically cosplaying as a zero IQ warrior that only smashes. Makes sense. <laughs> So, okay. Those fires the new waypoint markers. The little like stones that go up that have the blue runes on them are checkpoints. The waypoints are like still the ones that are seated into the ground. Waypoints. The That's what I'm talking about earlier when I saw Hearthstone. I like rolling slam. I was using it primarily. It is kind of slow. So like one of my complaints I had with rolling slam was that I would feel like I'd have to animation cancel. You'll notice like I kind of do that with the dodge. Like I, I do do animation canceling quite often because I feel like I get locked into the animation pretty hard. That was one That was one complaint that I kind of had. It's still like a strong move, but like it was definitely, it was definitely a reason, you know, to be, to be concerned. What? So the Rust King here, 
wasn't too bad. Not the boss. He summons minions and you gotta kind of deal with them. He shows up on one of the obelisks once you're doing the final rune of power from you grab the three different obelisks. Oh no, what act zone. is this? He's, he's pretty much your intro boss. Is this act okay. one? This is very early act one. So this is like first major boss act one. You can see there, loot is not specific to your class. We Our first yellow item in the game is actually a crossbow, and obviously we're not using crossbows. I did find a pretty I good would, item. I would actually get a crossbow gloves. just so you got gloves, some sort of range attack. Pair of gloves that have plus one to all melee skill gyms, like right in the beginning. But, Sorry eh. if I asked, but what's your opinion about the first comments about Souls-like elements on PoE2? Some people comment the game is more slowed down to the first. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's slow. I feel like this is a point that has been brought up and addressed the most out of the game the is slower the game which is that the pacing is slower because poe one is 10 years old to the point where they have had so many additions to the game you can zoom very fast the pacing of poe one in the first act and the pacing of poe two in the first act are very close to similar so there's that to keep in mind the other point is it is purposeful you, yeah you want to slow it down so that the rewards and the monsters feel more impactful because there's a significant you actually had a focus on things like last fights and individual pack uh, mobs you, you, you actually to, had a uh, flash that you could take for movement speed which i was stacking on i forgot what ranger build i had there were other things to speed you up but for sure Path of Exile 1 is much faster. Just one shot literally everything and just like move forward and span. Like it's supposed to it's supposed to be more meaningful combat interactions, and that's why they've added things like dodge, etc. They want the fights to actually be fights as opposed to farming. Hopefully that answers the hmm. question. It's right about this point that started to get a little bit easier. I had to get some skills behind me, a few levels and a couple pieces of gear, and then it started to get a little bit easier. Okay, so here we go. This is the what I would consider the first boss that is going to piss a lot of people off. Devour. Really? So in the very first playtest, there's been three playtests I've been part of. In the very first playtest, this boss made multiple people quit during the playtest. Like, they flew there to play the game. They started fighting the Devourer. And I'm talking, like... What? This is the... I'm guessing this is the end of Act 1 boss? And it made people, it broke people. Well, <laughs> Path of Exile is not going to hold your head. And their bosses are, um, yeah. Uh, I remember I raged uh, fighting the final boss of the regular story of Path of Exile, Act 3 boss, before they added the other acts. Oh man, he was, oh man. 30 minutes into the game and they couldn't beat it and they literally quit. So I'm talking for the next four or five hours, they were sitting there on their phone, <laughs> like for real. So this boss, yeah, some people are going to tell. However, I think they might. Did, did that poison? If he didn't heal, look, yo, people are going to tell. However, I think they might have made it maybe a little. That's bit crazy. Resistant. And to be fair, the first playtest was significantly harder than any of the other ones. Like Devourer definitely took me a moment to beat as well. Okay, so that's Devourer down. This is kind of like the. It almost looks like Blight type of area. But this is why some people thought that there was going to be, you know, light bosses, etc. Like way early we were seeing some footage is because we were seeing like this infected stuff. But this is the like the fungal growth area. It's not necessarily a blight related area. Yeah, and the fact that they so added dodge. Fun. I think there's an optional boss here, if I remember correctly. Okay, so here's the rotted druid. So this is another boss. This is an example of why I'm going stun mace build up. You see how quickly I stagger them, and even on the second staggering, like it's a it's a pretty decent. It's a pretty decent amount. Look at that. I'm not seeing what he's and staggered. staggered again. Okay, now nah, So it allows me just to unga bunga, we go face, you know, smork go face, basically on the bosses. You are ignoring the boss's mechanics. Which is kind of like what I wanted to do. <laughs> I get some other combos later on with like the earth shatter, etc. But like the constant proccing here is 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 pretty nice. And that for I can see that being a yeah, uh, nasty like move. 
Never mind what I said about Devour. Right, he actually does damage too. You gotta be kind of careful because you're like you get used to just going face and then you can stun lock him, but then you pretty much immediately can get one shot if you're not careful. So they actually do do a good amount of damage back, but just like that, it's over and we got our first yellow chest plate. You're gonna leak start <laughs> Titan. I'm thinking going Titan because of the way I want to do my build, which is double two-handed maces using giant's blood. Titan as an ascendancy. And then weapon swapping to another double two-handed weapon that has my DPS one. So I want like my maces to have like ruthless and stun build up, like all of my stun related gems. And then from swapping there, then I want to swap to my moves that have all of my DPS related gems. So my plan is to immediately proc stun. They're stunned, so I'm doing 40% more for the Titan Ascendancy. Then I'm swapping to my two-handed axes and I'm DPSing like as fast as possible or axe or staff or whatever it happens to be for the best DPS. We'll still figure out that part. But the one half of the build... The fact that you have that option, just use a weapon to set up something and then quick swap another weapon to, um... Like, half of Exiles is, in, in general, has always been pretty big on setup rather than you having a rotation. So, it's knowing when and how to use your moves, how to master your moves. Um, and the, appli the application of your moves and abilities rather than, okay, let me do this to build up resources and then having a resource burner. That's, that's just not two different games. Which is going to be the stun mace related build is 100%. How swapping weapons work. So on the skill tree, you can, or on the skill gem menu, you can associate which gems go <clears> to <throat> which weapon swaps. So they do this so that you can automatically swap weapons when you're casting something. So if I'm doing like, I'm doing my move, the rolling slam here, you're seeing where I do like the double hit. If I'm doing that move and I'm using it because it's a mace move, then it's gonna, I can auto associate it to the mace so that way it's actually castable. And then what I can do is maybe I'm doing that and that the support gems I put on it are like Ruthless, which does, you know, 500% more stun every fifth hit or whatever. If I'm doing a, all the stun build up like support style gems in order to knock down the boss, once it's knocked, then I can have the other weapons and the other weapon kits selected to whatever. I'm my guessing that's going to be some like sort of a key or a tab we'll figure that part out. or a and button that if you're playing with a controller and you're allowed to switch it. Uh, with all the support gems that are related to DPS once they're already stunned. So I'm going to stun them first, then swap to another basically weapon set, for instance. And what the second weapon set is, I'm not sure. The only thing I know is 100% we're going to go double two-handed maces in order to be able to proc a ton of stun, which means I'm going to be looking on my maces for things like stun build-up, like all of the affixes that will help me with that, and then the other part will be as well. I'm like, he already got his yeah, set up. This is a good boss fight, by the way. So this is a duo. Uh, Draven and her duo, like, 2v1 you, basically. And you got to kill both of them. It's a good fight. I think this one took me multiple attempts, actually. There's like big AoEs that he spams, that and then sick. Draven himself is like throwing shit at you. This is an enjoyable one. I remember in the second, the second access play test, there was a pretty decent amount of people struggling with this one as I struggled myself. The, the biggest issue I had was when he shoots out those, it can shotgun you if you're standing too close. So because I'm melee, I'm kind of in his face, and I'm getting shot. Yeah. So I'm really the mechanic here. You're gonna need a lot of life. What you have to do is constantly move and dodge out of the circle. And then you have like a DPS window, and then that one you shoot shit to the side, and then like hits in the middle. If you get hit in the middle, you pretty much just die. That one right there, it's the shotgun. Ooh. So you have to you have to kind of like know this what his animations are, and then you really want to avoid that one. That's the animation that would, that would hit you. Do you stop those I spirits? I think I died like four or five times. It took me quite a while to, to beat this guy. It's it's a good fight though. I mean that that one. See he doubles it and it's shotgun, so like you can. Wow. Really it. This is where some totems would probably gone. Wait a minute. Hit. That would, that would hit you. I think I die here again. I think I died like four or five times. It took me quite a while to, to beat this guy. It's it's a good fight though. I mean th that one. Oh. And you know what's funny? It can really bait you because he's just been doing one, one, one. He's dodging one, and then ironically, the time he like fully committed. See, he doubles it and it's shotgun, so like you can really get comboed out. This is where some totems would have probably gone handy. And I think mm. totems are going to be pretty good for for melee enjoyers because one of the issues you're going to experience is you're going to need to be able to move constantly to like dodge some type of shit. Like this one. And you're losing DPS timing because of that. Like that move right there, that's the terrifying. That and the, the combo one's kind of annoying because he does a lot of damage, but it's the, it's the other one that was shotgun. You have to be very careful with that. 
So this is where this is where this is Sparta would, would kick in. Having a shield would really help him, but if you're not building that, what's the point? If you're melee in the middle of an animation, like Roman Slam, for instance, and he starts attacking you, he'll actually off snare your camera, which can be a little bit annoying. You see, I'm starting to figure out the mechanics a little bit, but at this point, I don't have enough health pots. This is where I'm saying some life regen would go in hand. Yeah, I'm thinking. Or something, because in this type of situation, it's like maybe I could finish. The so my first uh, at the time was barbarian. My first barbarian build, I had life leech on kill, um, and I was doing a shield. I was basically trying to build some like invincible tank thing, um, which really worked if like bosses had ads then i could just kill the ads for health but in a situation like this that really wouldn't work because from what i see with this fight there's no ads so you're kind of locked in with you're going to die to this boss until you learn the mechanics depending on even what your class is definitely what your class of build is like uh, uh, I, I do see they put more uh, more meaningful boss fights earlier. Um, there is no, it's not like, um, and I'm not just zoning in on Diablo, but you would have a boss fight where, hey, you know, most, like I said, most of them were outside of being cinematically um, eye candy. None of them are really memorable. None of them really, you know, pushed you or you were stuck. This is a different game. And grinding gears is always good at having these bosses who just will drive you insane. To kill, but I have no more potions left and my health regen is really slow. So I feel like if you're melee, having some early game life regen would actually be very nice. This is something Hattie yes. pointed out in his like breakdown review video. I thought it was a really good point is that life regen's got kind of an insane amount of value uh, in the beginning, and I totally agree. I don't remember if I killed him here. I think I died. Oh! I died a combo. That's the part that you're going to... I think a lot of hardcore people are going to lose to the Draven shotgun in the beginning. The main fight's still coming up. I actually think this might arguably be harder than the main fight. This is one of the harder ones next. Like, but it's not like the main fight. It's, it's not the kill. main fight, that one? Yeah, you can see I get scared of the... I kind of have to learn to wait for openings here. Could you stop the green things from him him absorbing them? Like I'm looking at this fight and I'm trying to I'm trying to pick it apart men, uh, mentally. But then he cast that move. Like, see, that's the one. That one is going. I'm telling you right now, boys. That move is going to kill hardcore players like crazy. I think that move is going to be. Uh, that's going to be a melee person's worst nightmare because you have next to no reaction time. And the cone spread of it is so wide. You have some bosses, like the witch boss, that witch he fought. That would be easier for a ranger or what, because you're shooting them from range anyway, or a spellcaster. There are some bosses where you you struggle with because you're just flat out melee. And then there's some that some where they have high resistance aura on everything, and you're gonna struggle like hell because you're a caster. And when he does two of them, if you're standing in melee range, you will die. Because, it, like I was saying, it can shotgun you. Like, you can get hit by this shit, and it does a significant amount of damage. Like, it's actually kind of crazy damage. So you kind of have to wait for, like, only only the openings. Also, I'm not sure if my defenses were up to snub on this point. I might be Woo! under level. Look how much damage. I did about 60% of the one move. And if he double combos it, you're in trouble. You got it. That's pretty much my primary No, move. get out. The AoE is not, like the big circle AoE is not so bad. It's a little bit scary, but like it's more scary than like actually, you know, a GG problem. That move will fuck you up, but you just kind of got to like. I like how he swings for every word that he says. You can't really grieve for DPS. It's something I was learning with this one. Like there, I had to cancel it so that way I didn't get hit. Oh man. How do you fast the more defense skill tree gear? Yeah, both of those things. I mean, skill tree will have defenses on it, gear web defenses on it, things like resistances, HP. There you go. HP, for example. I thought I was gonna die there at the end. Woo! Of the fight. 
Also, this is the the other part of the thing. So we fought Draven with Asinia or whatever her name is as as a as a cast in, and then now we're doing the reverse of that, in which Draven helps her out. So you have to fight both of them to get basically both keys to the press now. The voice lines are pretty good too. Whoever yeah. voice acted this character did a phenomenal job. Oh yeah, he did say you had to kill both of them. Oh no. Oh he said he, he said Draven and you gotta kill him and his and Asana. But he got stuck on Draven, so my brain turned off and I'm like, wait, I know he he's I obviously edit this. That's what my brain is thinking. I'm like, well, why, well, where did this come from? And, oh, oh, <laughs> what? Right what? So if he dies here. It's very good. How do you think PoE 2 will change PoE 1? You think it will end up hurting his player retention even with the offset seasons? I think there will be a percentage of people that play PoE 2 over PoE 1, and I think newer players coming to PoE will probably go into PoE 2. Meaning that I think the overall player base for PoE 1 will be lower. I'm like saying of you're course. trying to heal. The dodge. The dodge was clutch. And so I, so I guess we got him. So that is, you fight the first two bosses to get the key or whatever. Then you fight this guy. And then this guy opens up the next portion. You're going to know this. There's a lot like three of bosses, bosses. And we are still only in Act 1. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to experience like a significant... You're going to experience a significant amount of bosses. Even from the start of the game forward. You know the GPU and CPU of the setup that was played on? No, I didn't bother looking at the PC settings. I, as soon as I got there, I knocked everyone out of my way. And then I ran to the PC. And then immediately launched the game. And I didn't move until the game was over. That was another boss, by the way. Pro Bell down. By the way, this is King of the Mist. Who kicks ass? Oh boy, it's gonna be some boss hunting. Looks like a pretty tough fight. Uh, yeah, he wants to realize the mechanics wasn't so bad. He's got a few tough moves. He's pretty tanky, and I think I'm a couple levels down the zone. I was trying to like rush through, to be fair. I didn't really do much crafting or, or gambling or anything like that. How are you fighting King? Gambling. I was the pinnacle boss. I think they have them associated with more than just that. This is from the canopy in Act 1. Impossible to portal out from boss fights. I think if you don't get cancelled here, but if you portal out, like, you have to do it again. You're kind yeah. of, like, locked in there. It's a good fight, also. This one this one, and Draven took me a few attempts in the final Act 3 boss. I think, uh, originally, that final boss of Act 3, you had a little thing where you could create a portal and come back if you were low. They, I know they patched it. And you patched it, but... It's like a battle of attrition. Some life regen early would go a very long way. The voice acting can give me a sex freeze, though, too. This whole, like, like cheese freeze was super annoying. Also, you'll notice that I do a significant amount of damage with the basic attack. The basic attack is actually, like, more damage than my rolling slam. It just doesn't stun as much. Later on in the game, when I was on the final Act 2 boss, I was ended up spamming the basic attack over the rolling slam. It actually was okay. straight up more damage. You can skill gym the basic attack, too. There's a longer boss fight later for the Act 2 final. And when I was doing that, I was running out of mana, so I started using the basic attack instead. Plus, I didn't have time to do all, like, the bigger casts. So I started using the basic attack. Do I get the knock? I remember if I do here. And if you hear him talk, he, he has to really think about these fights and how he's approaching these fights and how he's thinking about his build. And you have you have to take in the information that's in front of you. None of this is, let me just turn my brain off and I'm just going to go and, uh, well, I've, this, of course, going to do some broken meta builds where it's just, it, you show up and things die. But uh, luckily, that's not out yet. So close. Oh, yeah, the, the KO from the AoE from the left. I'm pretty much using all of the <laughs> abilities I had unlocked at this point. Like, I didn't have more by now. I maybe could have done some more side shit. But I'm pretty much main storyline Andy at this point. Yeah, I was trying to figure out the mechanics of it. it seemed like the totems were, like, kind of a problem. Also, the double, the, speaking of totems, my double totem is, like, actually, like, super strong. I was really enjoying the double totem. I'm trying to get the knock before he cast that shit. I think bleed is something that would have been really nice on this boss, maybe. 
I want a bleed build. So I'm stuck. I really want to do the mercenary. Uh, I want to do a bleed build. I, I, dots. I'm a, I'm a sucker for dots. DOTs. I want to do the blood mate. Like, that's three different things. And I was, as soon as I saw the mercenary, you saw my, my first video. I was like, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Then I saw the blood mage. So I was like, uh. And then, you know, a bleed bell, which I've played with. Oh, man. I don't know. I have even more bleeds. I think we have it on the rolling slam at this point, maybe on the basic attack. But like, some way they do more damage without having to be right on top of them. That's why I keep having to use the totems, eating the AoE a lot. Surprising how good of a boss fight they give you so early, though. There's shit everywhere. Like, you got the red shit, you got the purple shit, you got the things on the ground, you got the mass AoEs, you got the totems. Oh, yeah, I'm noticing how much stuff this boss is throwing at you. He has a full heal. A full heal? They give you quite a fight. Oh, it's going to be close. Can I get the knock? No! I died of the AoE in the middle. Then there's the AoE in the middle that also does. Like a giant, a giant shootout also. You can see what I mean when I was talking earlier about like fights being sort of a battle of attrition. They're longer and more drawn out and you run out of pots. And it reminds me of Elden Ring in that way with the boss fights where it's like you run out of pots and then you're like, oh shit, like I'm out of pots entirely. I'm sitting here like this is kind of like trying to, trying to. This is reminding me of not getting Elden dead, Ring. Basically, you're, you're. Try not Souls. to raw dog trade HP. You're not really regenerating the pot. From software. Be, like, careful and learn the mechanics, basically. So what happened here is you had a moment where uh, uh, From Software and Grinding Gears had a baby. That's what this... Well, honestly, Path of Exile was kind of Souls-like AARPG. It was... And I, I think that's why it stopped a lot of people from enjoying it. It was very hard to get into. Because how punishing it was. You die, you lose experience. You die too much, you lose a level. Um, you, um, oh, you put a point in you didn't mean to put in? Well, now you need a book, you need to go find a book of forget or a book of regret to help you take that one point out. You can't blank it out, your tree. You could not get rid of a, a point um, after that. Um, you like I said, you die too much, you start losing levels, and then you lose too many levels. Your your your, your gameplay or your build uh, or or you got a busted build. You find out the build don't work. You got to start over. And a lot of people even then was like, I don't have time for that. Like that is like the ceiling. I see what they were going for. Ceiling was way too damn high, way too high for that. This they got rid of that. You can get rid of points. You can take your points off with 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 flat gold. Uh, no death penalties. I think that will alleviate those people who were hesitant about even trying Path of Exile. They're they're concerned, but you're still gonna have some look at this and be like, nah, that that's just. Nah. I'll ask my buddy Moxie. I think he beat this like first try. He's playing Ranger. I think there's going to be some, I don't know any bosses that are like easier on melee, but I know a lot of bosses that are, they feel harder, for sure. Do you believe servers will hold on December 6th? Nope. It sounded like, from what I'm remembering from the podcast, it did sound more to me like he was, you know, I want to use the word surprised by the amount of reaction. There we go. I have day one many a games outside of streaming. In fact, y'all, I, I tried to do D4 day one here. Mm -mm. It don't work. Uh, actually, I don't think I was able to, I think the, the night of or Sunday, they, like, it was several days. I'm telling you right now, I am not day one this game. Any game I've ever day one Cataclysm, World of Warcraft Cataclysm, um, Warlords of Draenor, um, Diablo 4, Diablo 3. They can never handle the bloat of how many people. It's always more people than they expect, and the servers overload, and you're waiting for an hour. I have no problem. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday in this game. Well, I got, I got, I got to do that anyway. But I'm not even trying it on Saturday. I might look in on Saturday, 
Saturday night. But I'm looking, I'm honestly looking more towards probably we'll start this on Sunday and Monday rather than trying to do this on day one. It's just not, it's not going to Plus 30 spirits. So that's an example of plus spirit you can get for auras, et cetera. It did sound to me like he was pleasantly surprised by the amount of interest PoE2 was generating. They did my boy King of the Mist Dirt early act boss. He's a good fight though. First try indeed. There's a skill gem, so you do get skill gems like kind of randomly. There's yellow mob. Give you an idea of some yellow mobs there. Kind of cool moves he's got. There's oh great hammer. I think at one point I had a pretty good hammer. I don't remember at which point. Maybe it was this one. I already had it at this point, but I it was 24% increased physical. But I thought I got pretty really? good at some point here. I was trying to figure it out because I feel like my damage was like not insane. Yeah, there's 57%. So I think I end up using the 57% Augie here. See what I get. Wipe the strength, yeah. So, so 36, 48 to up to 61 there. So a little bit of a DPS increase on the two-hander. So not, but not bad as little starting mace there. No. And then I was basically going like, okay, I go, I think it's Warcry and Powered Attacks. Like I was using the Warcry. So I'm trying to do it where it's like all my damage is front loaded in one big hit. Basically. All you put points of Aftershock. And I end up trying to figure out where I go next. And I, I you see here. Yeah, really trying to do this stun so build. Going like all the way to stun shit is basically where I'm going. I take the war cry node, but then I pretty much go for I'm trying to get as much stun build up as I could because I was really wanting to see like how quickly you could really stun somebody. But you know, I probably could have got some better damage, but also I missed the loot box here in the beginning. I think I ended up having to come back for that. How the combat feel movement combat wise. Felt very, very good. I've it looks good. You gotta now. you got you gotta Everyone think about everywhere you are and play it. The best compliment I can give it is it's one of those games where I almost just don't remote. That's a good item, uh, just not for me. I almost don't care at all about only playing it for content. Like, it's the type of game, if I wasn't streaming and I wasn't making YouTube videos, I would be playing the fuck out of the game. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I rest assured you, I would be play. I will play this game regardless. I like the Path of Exile 1. It just, I just kind of got forced out. A couple of times before I knew um, about where to go to look up builds and uh, the thing to download, we could try. You could actually map out a build, but yeah, it's what um, I, I I felt like that with with D three and a couple other games where it's just like I could just you know if I if I have a complete day a in the home day nothing to do rare. But <laughs> this day, put in my life. But um, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would definitely play this. Play this. Burn this game. Like I would be regardless of making regardless. content. There's games you'll play and you'll try it, you know, and, and all that because it'll be a new game that's out. You're like, okay, let's give it a day or two or something, or you give it a stream to see what it's like. How the Big Zell Two is not one of those games. It's one of those games that you only want to play it because it's good. Like it feels good. And I didn't want to stop playing when the servers turned off during the play test. And I wish we could play it right now. Oh yeah, this guy. This guy caught me off guard. I was like going to read the thing because I thought I was going to do a voice line. I like listening to the voice line so like read you as you're doing it. And then this dude showed up. See, I like the knock. And that will give me 40% more That stagger time. looks and serious. In a while, I start getting the earth shatter combo. It feels more satisfying. Thank you. He does like a missile barrage or something. Fire breath. Okay. Classic. Yeah. Like a piety like move. What was the coolest item you found on your run? I didn't really, to be honest, I didn't find very many good items. Like, I actually felt like I was a pretty dry playthrough. Um, I didn't Why? get that much shit at all. Well, I it is random. Like, barely got any currency. At one point, I had to get a basic ass transmute from Moxie because I literally couldn't even, like, blew my piece of gear. Um, it was a pretty, it was a pretty Who's dry Moxie? playthrough. Okay, so this is the final. The streamer Moxie? This is the final Act 1 boss. Effectively, like, I think that's where the beast from the cinematic. Oh, the cinematic. Yeah, they look at H. The iron 
the Iron Count guy here who has like two, he has basically two phases. You have your basic phase in which he's just a sword Andy, and then he has his wolf phase in which he does a bunch of dashes, etc. against you. He can freeze you with the giant poke, as you're going to see there. He is staggerable, which is basically my whole move, and he just kind of attacks fast. He's not really actually like that scary. I ain't trying to poke no holes in anybody's belt. But what if he fights a boss that's not staggerable or stunnable? Or has very high resist? Just a thought. I think they might have turned him down a little bit. The freeze is pretty annoying. But I feel like he was actually more annoying before. I feel like they might have nerfed him a little bit. Because before he would like his his melee felt more disgusting to me previously. If I'm being quite honest, well, you might need to back it off. So these are my earth shatter. Mm -hmm. I can like put down these these spikes, and then when I war cry, it explodes the spikes doing. He is damage. aggressive so as hell. To figure out, and you know I'm play testing, so I'm learning this. So here he goes, become a wolf. There. This is the guy from the intro, by the way, that stabbed the hooded one. And he's got the sword with the runes on it, right? But the combo I'm trying to figure out here is if I knock him <laughs> with a mace. And then good combo things, going. He's down, and I just basically just tanking some dog shit. But if I spam these things and then war cry, I can do like this big charge combo damage, which was effectively why I was trying to figure out how to get that to work just right. And I I ended up getting this later on in the game, but I had just sort of unlocked these moves and I figured out this combo. And the combo is actually like pretty strong. Oh, but that is take a while. So to that transformation to like, to, is like, crazy. Strong. I ended up getting this later on in the game, but I had just sort of unlocked these moves, and I figured out this combo, and the combo is actually, like, pretty strong, Ugh. but it does take a while to get them up, so what I, and it's what I back. figured out about that is when they're doing, like, immunity frames, or they're staggered or something, that's when you kind of spam them. If, you, if there's a moment in which you can't DPS till later, it gives you, like, delayed damage. You have a six-legged werewolf. Here I can, like, put the spikes or totems or what have you, and then you can kind of do a, a burst of damage later. Also, With two miles. moves themselves actually do and then he does you know obviously ice rain here etc before he's gonna do a big fog move but those those spikes that come out of the ground too is the first act theme um ice i remember it might be where each act has a theme i remember um act two path of exile one came across a lot of poison a lot of poison and then uh, Act 3 was a lot of fire. But Piety was a fire. Uh, Piety had bleeds, too. Do stagger as well, so you can sort of set them up while he's gone and then spike them. Now this part, some people were struggling a bit with this part because in order to indicate when he's about to come out, like the, there's not much of a timer, but he'll shit talk you and at the end of shit talking you, then he'll charge. So that's kind of like your indicator on when he's about to come out of basically the tree and he does it a few times and then you go so i was trying to just use the totems to like sort of the block for a bit again sort now of see here's where kill on life are really coming to play there's a lot of ads here battle of attrition like i you know if i run out of all my pots right i'm just eventually going to bleed out and die against him and then this part because the rolling slam like the rolling slam is so slow that phase would be a way to get back health yeah, it does a meteor slam, sort of like Elden Ring there. Doing the rolling slam does kind of leave you weak, I feel like, a bunch. So you got to be kind of careful with it. Having some attack speed or something, I feel like, would actually be a pretty big mm -hmm. deal for Warrior. Because it's just how, how long, I mean, to be honest, it takes fucking forever to cast some of your moves. Like, the delay is really long. Just your movement speed and all that in general. I, I think having movement speed on the boots is going to be just as big, obviously. And then having some attack speed or something for this would, would be lovely because I was struggling with, with just straight up my my attack speed like I would get eat a lot of stuff because I started walking into the animation or something there's a good example of like the dodge roll can block some things but not everything I was able to block the swipe but you know you can't exactly block like random it's so adding an ice here, I remember, right? I ran out of pot. yeah I ran out of pots here probably could have killed him if I didn't eat the his attack speed is slow to where for every one hit first of all the boss Boss attack like crack head speed anyway. But for every one hit he does or try or swing he tries to do to the boss, one to two hits the boss is giving him three to five back attacks. That don't mean they hit, but he he literally got to the point you can't trade with the boss because the attack speed is so slow. 
So yeah, definitely when he when when it's live time, knowing this and he went through this, you know, and of course it's easy to hindsight twenty twenty. He's saying the stuff I'm saying right now. He needs some life regen. He's gonna need some life regen. And definitely some some attack speed. I would have went with the you got a chance to use a shield and a two handed mace. I, I, you got to spec into that. That's probably not gonna be available at, at the beginning of Agro. Most of his things at the end, but you can have at it. Boss is not too bad compared to like Draven in the earlier acts when you're maybe not as prepped with gear, etc. I definitely think that those were harder bosses. I think Kings of the Mist was way harder than this guy. So I don't think he's too bad. And everything is clearly indicated on the move. So you, you learn it pretty fast. None of the moves really feel frustrating. Here I kind of learned, okay, like spam this shit and then blow it up. And Ooh. Kind of like prep some damage in advance. Okay. So starting to piece together the builds a little bit better. And then you can see the burst damage is actually like pretty good because you get the full combo set up there with the earthquake and all that. And at that point, the damage is like pretty solid. So I think Warrior, it, once we learn the combos of the Warrior, I think Warrior is actually going to like absolutely melt. It's just going to take a bit of time to like figure out the good combos and how to set them up and get the right gear and all that. But that's why I definitely like Warrior might be clunky, but I, I think he's going to slap. And you can see we're already like vastly. Wow, that way that better. Here. Damage is there. It's just learning to set it up. And, and again, learn. it's all about just knowing your build, learning, 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 your, learning the build and learning what works. There's a lot more. You have to learn what does what and how to use it in different ways to use it. Then, sorry, Diablo 4. Like, it's like just talking about it. Kind of crap on Diablo by default. The fog is rolling in. At the end of every shit talk sentence who charge you. And then these guys are body blocking you because, you know, you can't just walk through them. So the totem actually was kind of goaded for this. Even if you're not going to be like a big totem Andy, maybe you don't like totems. Having totem is actually kind of nice because it, it kind of deters people for a while, like that taunt. Like mm. decoy totem from POE1. So it, it kind of keeps them off your ass for a moment, which I was a big fan of. And there we, there we go. go. So that's the final Act 1 boss anyway. Didn't get two crazy drops throughout the entire fight, or through in there I got bonus max HP for the fight there. Throughout the entire playthrough, I actually didn't really get that too crazy of gear to be quite honest. I think I get like maybe a better axe later, or better maul later, but nothing too insane. Cheers, boys! Thanks for coming by. I love you all. Okay, with that, that was a look at the warrior gameplay. I thought, as she said, now mind you. This is just one playthrough of a warrior with one build. He's focusing on crit. Maybe you want to do a, a do. I'm I always been a sucker for dual will too. Oh, uh, I like dual will. And maybe you want to do two dual will Spartacus type build. You want to. There's different ways to build. You want to get some magic. You want to be like a battle mage, I guess. You want to build into where you can actually do damage with the bow and have the bow for long range. This. No way. Uh, well, there's wrong answers, but you can play. But there's no. You're limited by how by by your mind in in a way. Uh, if you can think it up and try it, it's likely viable. You just and it's recommended. So you're definitely gated by as far as how much you want to try. But as you see, this game is not going to be a joke. It is going to be crazy day one. But let me know in the comment section down below that this game make you think about um playing the warrior or you already got your mindset on it. What do you think about the bosses that's gonna be waiting you for act one? Down below and of course hit that like and subscribe and again this is Revos and I'm out.